Hello everyone and welcome to the first tutorial of Xcode tutorial section. Uh, this is a new section that I'm doing to basically uncover uh, some of the secrets of Xcode, so to speak. Just different things that you can do in Xcode, either to make it look better or look the way, make it look more the way you want it to. Uh, changing fonts, changing different uh, aspects of it that just help you. Um, just some other features in it that uh, you may want to use as you code as well. These tutorials are just basically a little bit on Xcode. So, um, you know, when we do our tutorials, for the most part, we're probably using maybe maybe 1% of Xcode's full functionality. So, you know, uh, Xcode's a huge, big, uh, integrated development environment, and you can do tons of things with it, so that's why I'm making these tutorials. So, at this point, um, when you're doing these, I expect that you've watched pretty much like maybe one or two tutorials, um, basically um, just a little bit of programming tutorials or any other tutorial that um, you know how to create a project. That's really all I expect you to know. And if you, I mean, you, you just press this button here, not that hard. And I'm going to cancel out of that because I've already created my lesson over here. So yeah, just if you want to follow along, just create a new Xcode project and you guys know how to do this. So let's go ahead and open the one that I have, or in your case, create a new one. And what we're going to be focusing on in this tutorial is just all the, well not all the preferences, because that would take me forever, but um, the main preferences that we can change in Xcode. So let's go up to Xcode preferences here, and let's scroll over to general. And as you can see, we have a few options that we can change. I'm going to focus on two of them. So, um, we can change the layout of Xcode, which basically means how it looks. Uh, we have to close all the projects down that we're using if we want to change this. But as you can see, we have two other options if we so choose to change it. I personally just like the default option, and the other ones seem sort of confusing to me anyway, um, even if they are more simple. But anyway, um, I like the default option, but choose whatever you want. Um, the second option is to reopen projects when you quit. So basically, it's kind of like the Firefox, uh, like save tabs sort of idea, or save you know the state of Firefox. So when you open it up again, it'll reopen the pages that you were on. That's basically the same thing. So if I apply this now, if I quit Xcode and I was uh, I was working on lesson one, so when I go to reopen Xcode, it'll reopen lesson one. Same thing that I was working on. So that's how that works. Nothing too uh, mind-blowing, I guess. If you leave it off, it'll just bring you to the Xcode welcome page. All right, so let's move on to the second tab, which is Code Sense. Code Sense is basically the thing that auto-completes code for you. So when, uh, for example, you create a new variable or something, and you get the little uh, completion when you're typing, so you know you start typing the name and then it shows something after and if you hit the right or tab arrow key it'll you know show you the option so that's uh, code sense uh, at work and um, another thing that it does is also when you type like if then it'll complete how the if statement works you you guys know what I'm talking about so that's uh, another thing that code sense does and um, yeah so that's pretty much what code sense is uh, the main thing I just want to talk about in this section is the automatically suggest feature. So automatically suggest is when it completes your code, basically. So if you never want it to do this, or never want it to suggest any options, you just hit automatically suggest never. Um, I don't really know too many people who like this option, but um, some people like to type everything out, whatever. Um, I like to be cheap and um, take as much stuff from Xcode as I can, so I use immediately, but doesn't really matter. Pick what you want. Uh, another option is to do with delay, which basically means if I type if, it'll take um, whatever delay time I put in to auto-complete it. So let's show this as an example. If I type in if, and wait three seconds, and as you can see, it auto-completes it three seconds after it realizes that I've typed if. So uh, if I just go ahead and delete this, and there we go. So that's uh, the automatically suggesting with delay. So I'm just going to put it back to immediate, because that's what I prefer. 
The next three tabs we're just going to skip because they don't really pertain to us or I haven't talked about uh, what's in them or any what, what they really mean. So uh, just skip them. They don't really help you. So uh, let's go to key bindings now. And key bindings is simply just like keyboard shortcuts. So for example, in our uh, we can change any keyboard shortcut we want in our um, menu bar. So if we want to change what one of these shortcuts is up here, we can just do that right in the menu uh, key binding section. If we want to change a action uh, key command, we can do that as well. And little do you know, there are a lot of different um, key commands that uh, you can use in Xcode, and most people don't know this, which um, can actually help you quite a bit depending on what you're doing. So for example, there's this action that will delete to the end of line, which basically means wherever your cursor is, and if you type this command, it will delete whatever else is after. So uh, let's say we want to make a key command for this. So when we click it, it'll ask us to make a copy because it always wants to keep the Xcode default as the default. So we'll just hit make copy and it'll ask for a name and I'll just go for that for right now. So now we have the option to change the keys. So now you just hold down whatever key command you want. So I'm going to do control option P just so that it works. I think I don't think there's anything else with that option there. And I know there isn't because I've done this probably 10 times now. Um, so for this key command, uh, we'll just apply the changes. And let's test this out. So we'll put our cursor there, control option P, and boom, we delete the rest of the line. So that's how different actions work in um, Xcode. And you will probably find this quite useful. Uh, there's so many actions here that you can uh, check out. And I highly suggest you, you know, just take a look at some that you might want to use. So now let's go over to text editing, which is another awesome section. And I'm only going to focus on two things um, because those are the main things that are in this section. So there are two, the two things are these two right here. There's the show gutter, and the gutter is this thing right on the side. And it sounds like a really, really cruddy name for it. And as far as you know, uh, the, this gutter does absolutely nothing. So, um, you know, you most if you've just started watching the tutorials, you won't know what the gutter actually does. It's uh, for debugging stuff later, but um, I haven't shown you how to do that yet. So if you don't want to show the gutter, then you can literally just click this and apply that. And as you can see, the gutter is now gone. So that's one option. If you want to show line numbers, uh, which can be helpful as well, you can apply that. And as you can see, uh, line numbers will appear down the side, which um, some people like, because then you could just say to somebody, hey, can you check out line eight? And you, they'll say, sure. And then you or whoever's looking at your code can go to line eight and just read whatever it is and say that you're uh, absolutely right. You did a good job. Um, yeah, so that's what line numbers do. Pretty simple, not uh, much. And again, uh, feel free to check out any of these other options. Most of them don't really matter, but uh, these are, I'm just covering some of the main ones because I don't have a lot of time in this tutorial. So let's go through this section now, which is the font and colors. And um, I have a lot of copies because I've done this too many times now. And um, basically, this is, I've made a copy of this called Tutorial Style, which I use for all the tutorials. And basically, it's just the default with a 17 point font. So if I want to, um, I can change a bunch. They have some awesome presets here. They have midnight, which is pretty fancy. And look at that, that's pretty cool. So uh, you can change to whatever you want and you can change any of the colors. Uh, it's pretty customizable, I guess. Now if I wanna, let's say I wanna change these all to a really large font because my grandmother is blind and she wants to program because that's every grandmother's dream. So let's say make a copy and it'll give us some awesome name, copy number three. And now I have to, now that it's made the copy, I have to redo this fonts thing. So my grandma needs 36 point font because she's apparently blind. And my, my grandmother's actually not blind, but anyway. Um, here is the code, and as you can see, it is ginormous in its 36-point font. So if you're actually 
coating in the size. You may want to move your window around a bit. Anyway, that's um, how to change some fonts. And you can change individual numbers too, but anyway, that's beyond the point. And you can change individual colors. So anyway, that's that. And I'm just going to go back to tutorial style here. Now let's move on to the last section that I'm going to cover, which is indentation. Indentation has a few different uh, subjects in it. There's the tab section, which allows you to change the spacing for each tab that you do, or indent. So uh, when you go to uh, hit the tab button, you can specify if it goes up four spaces or if it goes 200. Uh, it's up to you, but you know you may want to choose a logical number. Just you know, do whatever you want. I don't care. It's your uh, developing environment, so you know whatever works best for you. That's why I'm teaching this. Um, the next part would be line wrapping, which uh, basically means that if I go to um, blah blah blah, let's actually apply this. I don't know if I applied it or not. So if I once I make those changes and I keep typing blah 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 blah, and obviously this isn't real code, but here you go. As you can see, it auto um, goes around again. It doesn't keep going, and what I mean by this is it doesn't make a little scroll bar at the bottom and keep going like that. So uh, it might be useful for some people if you, you know, don't like scrolling across back and forth. You know, whatever. Uh, it's a neat little option and it's there, so that's why I thought I'd give it to you. Another thing is syntax, syntax aware indenting, which basically means that um, Xcode sort of knows that if you have an if statement and some curly braces, then everything in those curly braces will be automatically indented. So basically, uh, if you type new, new code somewhere, it'll automatically indent it to where it thinks it should be, uh, judging by where all this, the curly braces are. So we'll leave it at that. Um, the last option that I'm going to discuss in this tutorial is automatically inserting the closing brace. Um, I'll, sh I'll demonstrate this right now. So let's deselect it. Let's say I wanted to make a cool method called, and if you don't know what a method is, um, well, I don't know, I guess you should watch my tutorials. That would help. Um, so anyway, let's just say we're going to make a method, and uh, we want to make a curly brace. And as you can see, it doesn't create the co closing brace. It just creates the first one, which, you know, is understandable because that's all we typed. But some people, including myself, uh, like to add the closing brace automatically. So let's say we have a function here and we make the first brace. It nicely automatically creates the end brace for us. And this just helps uh, so that if you do forget to put in that closing brace, um, you didn't really forget because it automatically did it for you. So it's just one of those time saving options. So there's, you know, there's tons of things that you can change in the Xcode preferences, and the rest are um, just sort of complicated and don't really apply to us as well. So, um, yeah, the, there are just tons of different options that you can change, fool around with it, and see what you like best. Anyway, um, this is the first tutorial of probably many Xcode tutorials. There's tons of things you can learn, and more programming tutorials will definitely be on the way. Uh, this isn't like, I'm not just switching to uh, these tutorials now. There's more tutorial, more programming tutorials are definitely on the way. And if you like these tutorials, please subscribe to the channel. I mean, it's not going to hurt, really. It won't. And uh, I don't spam 100 videos a day, so you're not going to be... Uh, your subscription box probably won't change that much. Um, I try to get in at least one video a week. Um, I try to get more than that, but um, time permitting, anyway. So, uh, yeah, this was uh, first tutorial of Xcode Tutorials. Uh, I should find a better name for it. But anyway, see you next tutorial.